Now, let me discuss the other group of drugs inhibiting the metabolism of the dopamine. Now, remember this dopamine it is metabolized by two important enzymes that is monoamino oxidase and as well as the COMT. These two enzymes monoamino oxidase and catechol O methyltransferase they are the enzymes which will metabolize the dopamine. So first let me discuss about the COMT inhibitors. Right, let me discuss about the COMT inhibitors. Now, if you take this COMT inhibitors, this enzyme metabolizes the dopamine as well as levodopa to 3 OMD. Right, this COMT will metabolize the dopamine and as well as even the levodopa. 3-orthomethyl dopa right in the presence of this enzyme so whenever this enzyme is there the levels of the dopamine and levodopa they are getting reduced and thereby they are getting converted into 3-o-methyl dopa that is orthomethyl dopa so now what you have to do is you have to give a group of drugs which will inhibit that particular COMT enzyme so we have two drugs for that that is one we have tolcapone and the other drug what we have is the entacapone right the tolcapone and as well as the entacapone now this particular tolcapone and as well as entacapone what they do they inhibit that particular COMT enzyme and thereby your dopamine and levodopa they are not converted into 3 o methyl dopa and thereby the levels of the levodopa they are increased so thus levodopa levels whichever are increased this levodopa will cross the blood brain barrier and that is useful for the treatment of parkinsonism now remember this particular drugs right this COMT inhibitors these can be given in combination with levodopa plus carbidopa so these drugs these can be given in combination with levodopa plus carbidopa so what you have to do is these COMT inhibitors they can be given along with levodopa plus carbidopa right levodopa plus carbidopa all right so this combination what it will do this combination will inhibit the dopa decarboxylase and this combination will also inhibit this COMT enzymes and thereby the levels of the levodopa will be increased and once the levels of the levodopa are increased they will cross the blood brain barrier and the levels of the levodopa it will increase within the brain right otherwise what will happen is whenever you are giving only levodopa plus carbidopa right when when you are giving only levodopa plus carbidopa what will happen is that levodopa in the presence of COMT enzyme is converted into 3 o methyl dopa right so 3 o methyl dopa which is formed by the metabolism of the levodopa it competes with the levodopa itself for the entry into the brain right the 3 o methyl dopa which is formed by the metabolism of the levodopa it competes with the levodopa itself for the entry into the brain so when you use this particular tolcapone and as well as entacapone this enzyme is inhibited then there is no formation of the 3 o methyl dopa all right so and what you have to remember here is you take we are having two drugs that is tolcapone and as well as entacapone tolcapone remember this will inhibit the COMT right this will inhibit the COMT enzyme both in the periphery right both in the periphery and as well as within the center right it will inhibit this COMT both in the periphery and as well as the center 
whereas you take this entacapone entacapone this drug will act only in the periphery right this drug will act only in the periphery this is a very very important point right so what is a point that need to be remembered here is the major beneficial effect of these drugs in parkinsonism is due to the peripheral inhibition of the COMT right the major beneficial effect of these drugs is due to the peripheral inhibition of the COMT all right next among these two drugs that is tolcapone and as well as entacapone which is more potent your tolcapone is more potent and not only more potent this is also longer acting right this is also longer acting so the tolcapone which is formed this is more potent and as well as longer acting than compared to that of the entacapone but even though tolcapone is more potent and longer acting this is not preferred why because the tolcapone is associated with severe hepatotoxic effects this is associated with severe hepatotoxic effects so that is the reason why this tolcapone it is not preferred right so this is about your COMT inhibitors so remember the COMT inhibitors we have two important drugs that is tolcapone and as well as entacapone so this COMT inhibitors will inhibit this uh, enzyme COMT and thereby the levodopa is not converted into 3O methyl dopa and this COMT inhibitors they are given in combination with the levodopa plus carbidopa why because if we use only levodopa plus carbidopa this levodopa in the presence of enzyme COMT is converted into 3O methyl dopa right and that 3O methyl dopa which is formed will be in competition with the levodopa for crossing the blood brain barrier so when you use the COMT inhibitors there is no question of the formation of 3O methyl dopa and in between the comparison of these two drugs the tolcapone it is it will inhibit the COMT both in the periphery and as well as in the center whereas entacapone it will inhibit the COMT only in the periphery right the major role of these drugs in the treatment of the parkinsonism is inhibition of the COMT in the periphery and you take this tolcapone it is more potent and as well as longer acting even though it is more potent and longer acting this tolcapone is not used much why because it is associated with severe hepatotoxic effects so that is the reason why this particular tolcapone is not used much so we have discussed the COMT inhibitors now let me discuss the other group of drugs which will inhibit the monoamino oxidase so in the presence of COMT dopamine is converted into or levodopa and dopamine it is converted into 3O methyl dopa whereas in the presence of enzyme MAO that is monoamino oxidase this dopamine is converted into dopac that is dihydroxyphenyl acetic acid so now when this mao enzyme is there that is monoamino oxidase enzyme is there the dopamine levels they get reduced so what you do is you give a drugs or you give a group of drugs which will inhibit this particular the mao enzyme right so we have accordingly what is called as mao b inhibitors that is monoamino oxidase b inhibitors right so so the drugs in this mao b inhibitors are we have seligiline and the other drug what we have is the rasagiline right seligiline and as well as rasagiline so both of these drugs they are irreversible and selective inhibitors of mao b irreversible and selective inhibitors of monoamino oxidase B all right now so these drugs 
they are also given in combination with levodopa plus carbidopa to decrease the dose of levodopa right so these drugs they are given in combination with levodopa plus carbidopa mainly to reduce the dosage of the levodopa and thereby reducing the adverse effects associated with the levodopa all right now remember this selegiline and rasagiline right this selegiline and rasagiline whenever they are given at normal doses right whenever they are given at normal doses they inhibit only one enzyme that is mao b so they inhibit only mono amino oxidase b at normal doses but however whenever these drugs when they are given in high doses right whenever they are given in high doses they will inhibit another enzyme that is mono amino oxidase a so when you give this particular drugs under high doses they will inhibit a mono amino oxidase a and this will lead to hypertensive crisis right this will lead to hypertensive crisis so this is the problem when you are giving the selegiline at and rasagiline at higher doses and this particular hypertensive crisis which is occurring because of the inhibition of this mono amino oxidase enzyme is what is called as the cheese reaction right is what is called as the cheese reaction right so whenever these drugs are given in high doses they also inhibit mono amino oxidase a and they can lead to hypertensive crisis which is called cheese reaction with substances like tyramine containing foods and serotonin syndrome with tricyclic antidepressants right so whenever you give this in high doses there are two things one hypertensive crisis with tyramine containing food substances and the other one is the serotonin syndrome right now you take this selegiline and rasagiline which is more potent remember it is rasagiline which is more potent compared to that of the selegiline right more potent compared to that of selegiline right and the very important property of these drugs is these drugs they are thought to reduce the disease progression right they reduce the disease progression right so this is about your mono amino oxidase b inhibitors remember the mono amino oxidase enzyme will convert the levodopa or dopamine to dopac that is dihydroxy phenyl acetic acid so what you do is you give a group of drugs which will inhibit this mono amino oxidase b enzyme so mao b inhibitors are selegiline and as well as rasagiline and these drugs they are given in combination with levodopa plus carbidopa and basically if you take these two drugs that is selegiline and rasagiline they are irreversible and selective inhibitors of mono amino oxidase b now this selegiline and rasagiline whenever they are given in normal doses they will inhibit only mono amino oxidase b but whenever you give these drugs at higher doses they will also inhibit the mono amino oxidase a enzyme and that will lead to hypertensive crisis which is called cheese reaction with tyramine containing food substances and it will also lead to serotonin syndrome with tricyclic antidepressants and in between these two remember rasagiline is more potent compared to that of selegiline and these drugs they are found to decrease the disease progression in patients with the parkinsonism